So looking at the private sector classifications, and private sector is basically everything but the government, first off, these are not going to be as hard and fast as the government slash public sector classifications. A lot of this depends on the size of the organization you're working for, uh, whether or not it's regulated, and sometimes just the product or service that you're building slash providing. So you may see all of these, you may see none of these, you may see these and a whole bunch more, but this is just set up to describe like a general data classification structure for a private organization. So starting off public is, you know, basically analogous to unclassified. This is stuff that you make available to the public. A lot of this can be like marketing or, you know, information that you want to share with your public slash customers. And you can see we have three levels of classified information as it were. So this is similar to the public sector sensitive. It could cause embarrassment. So it's information that would cause the least damage. Private organizational information that should be kept secret and whose accuracy should be maintained. Kind of a crappy definition because all your information should have its accuracy maintained. Uh, but this is the safe middle. And then confidential. This is the stuff that would be very damaging if it were to get out into the wild. And like I said, these aren't mandated so you may or may not see these you may see these with different verbiage uh, you may not see them at all depending on the organization that you're working for uh, one other thing to point out is that private corporations often have a Additional confidentiality agreements, such as a, such as a NDA, a non-disclosure agreement. So that could be in addition to their internal data classification structure. So here's a graphic that just shows a comparison between the public and private sector data classification structures. So you can see, unclassified is analogous to public sensitive but unclassified that's that unclassified information that has some restrictions on it and that's within the public sector and then the three tiers of classified information which are analogous to each other so you've got confidential equals sensitive in the private sector secret equals private top secret equals confidential the only goofy bit here is that the highest level private sector data classification shares the same name as the lowest level public sector data classification. So don't trip up over that and keep that in mind because I could see that being great fodder for an exam question. If you take nothing else from this lesson, I would commit this to memory going into the CCNA security exam. So we took a look at data classification and a couple of data classification structures. So we're going to go really quickly over the data classification criteria. Peep these. I don't know how much you want to keep these in your head as far as exam. The first of these criteria is value. And that's how valuable the data is to the organization or to paraphrase how much shit would hit the fan if this was not restricted. And this is going to be your most important criteria because this maps directly to that sensitivity value that you're using to classify your data in the first place. Age, how old the, the data is. This is good for review, uh, culling out old documents, um, making sure that stuff is kept up to date. If it's five years old, you're probably going to want to have somebody put their eyes over it, make sure that that information is still accurate. Useful life, basically how long before this is considered obsolete. Say this is your diagram for your Windows 2000 server farm. Well, you're not running that you're not running Windows 2000 anymore you don't have that particular server farm you're not using those passwords those IP addresses so at that point it's not really relevant it's obsolete so you could either unclassify it declassify it actually or just go ahead and delete it you know in most cases in an enterprise you're just gonna go ahead and get rid of that document and the last one is personal association and um, this is information that could be related to individuals uh, private information as I mentioned earlier I work in healthcare so this is a big one for us we have to scrub our data to make sure that we don't make available information that can be traced back to an individual's medical record we are strictly regulated to not let that stuff get out so that's a big one for us and after the data has been classified and set up in your structure there's going to be different roles that different people have as far as interacting with this data now the owner is going to set up the initial classification level and is probably going to review the procedures for classifying information they may not be directly updating the documents as far as their accuracy, but they're going to go over like, okay, what constitutes a uh, confidential document versus a secret document versus a top secret document. Custodian is the person that keeps the information up to date and accurate, and he's going to be in charge of 
backing up that information and creating rest restoration points for that data basically he's going to maintain the data the user is going to be pretty obviously uh, the person who is going to access that data according to their specific security clearance sorry I'm just gonna read this verbatim pretty much as a network engineer you're probably gonna swim in all three of these pools at some point in your career for example you may create a network document and decide who needs to have access to that document so in that case you're the owner you're creating this document you're saying you know what I want the NOC to have this and my engineering team I don't want anybody else to have this because it's none of their damn business that's their quote unquote need to know over time you'll be reviewing this document and keeping it up to date as well as archiving changes to the document so as the network grows you're gonna add systems to it uh, you might change IP addresses you might change any of the information on there so that's the custodian role and unfortunately we do have a lot of that that we do as network engineers and more unfortunately a lot of us don't keep up to it and that is a pain in the ass for the next group which is the users so you're likely going to refer to this documentation whenever you need to change or troubleshoot the network in that case you're acting as the user all right and that's gonna wrap it up for data classification as I stated this is not explicitly on the CCNA security exam blueprint but I've read like two or three books and it's been present in both of them so I think it would be a good idea just to at least you know know that that one slide that shows the the different levels of uh, classification for both the public and the private sector outside of that it's just good general knowledge and may come into play depending where you work at all right obviously there's not going to be a lab section for this lesson so I think that's it I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up thanks once again for joining me in the packet lab and I hope this helps you on your route to becoming a network god